Hey, what's up guys, Alex here. Thank you for checking this video. Welcome to another tutorial about Ansible. In this video, we're gonna take a look on how to automate a couple of tasks by writing a super handy playbook. Because up until now, we always wrote our command with the usual Ansible group of our hosts and then the type of tag that we wanna do it in our case, ping. But it's not really useful that way, especially if we have multiple tasks, we cannot write them manually all the time. We need something, we need a list of pre-populated tasks or preset attributes that automatically can trigger all the actions that we need to trigger. So let's do it. This episode is brought to you by SkySilk. If you're looking for a powerful, reliable, and affordable VPS in the cloud, skysail.com is the answer for you. Look no further for amazing, powerful cloud computing machine starting as low as $1 per month. Click the link in the description below to learn more. Let's create a new file called uh, playbook.yaml, so WML extension, and you can call this file however you want. I call it playbook because the way Ansible works when you pass a YAML file in order to have a unique set of actions, you need to use the Ansible playbook bash command. But of course you can call this file a deploy or you can call it test or you can call it whatever you want. I like to call it playbook because it's the kind of like makes sense. If you're using the Ansible playbook bash command, let's tap a playbook YAML file. The YAML file has a really interesting syntax because it's all based on dashes and indentation. It doesn't use semicolons, commas, period, or any special characters. It's just really indentation and dashes. So if you mess up your indentation, it won't work. So let's start filling up this thing. First of all, let's write three dashes to set the start of our playbook file. And then the first attribute, the first option that we need to specify in our playbook is the list of hosts that we want to use. In our case, like we did in the previous lesson, we want to just tap the web hosts. So we can specify web and it's going to grab all the hosts below the web category. We could also specify all if you just have one IP address in your hosts file, but it's always better to be thorough and just specify which host we want to tap. Then right after, let's remember to indent at the same indentation of the host right after dash, we can start specifying a list of tasks with a column. And all these tasks will be automatically triggered by Ansible. So let's say we want to just uh, trigger the ping task. So here automatically it's indented. Let's hit a dash, which is the symbol to say, hey, this is a task and let's specify the task ping and column at the end. So the column is necessary because ping is an actual command that accepts some parameters that we could write after the column. We don't want to specify any unique parameters or anything particular, but if we don't write the column here, this command will not get recognized because it just, it looks like a string. It will interpret it by the YAML file like a string. This is not a string, it's a command. So the column at the end, even if we don't specify anything else after, it's necessary. And that's it. We can trigger this file by simply accessing our terminal. Let's clear this up. Let's clean here and let's tap instead of simple Ansible command, let's write Ansible dash playbook and then specify which playbook, which YAML file we should use. In our case, it's a playbook.yml. Let's hit enter. Automatically, Ansible will give us an overview of all the steps that it's doing. The first thing is playing the web host because it's, that's exactly what we specified here. If we add all, we would have play all. Then he's gathering the facts and we're gonna go back to these right after to understand what it is and then starts to execute all the tasks that we specify. In our case, we specify just one task ping and we get a positive response. And at the end, it's gonna give us a recap of all the actions that we had, if something changed, it was unreachable or failed. So here you can see we have two tasks, the gathering facts and the ping. But the fact is that in our playbook, we only specified the ping. The gathering facts is not something that we specify because Ansible automatically does it by itself. Whenever it connects remotely to a server, it gathers all the facts of that specific server in terms of which version of PHP is running, which version of the kernel is running, the Ubuntu version, if we're tapping NGINX, which version of NGINX is there. So it gathers all the information of your server. 
And if you have a lot of things installed on your server, gathering the facts here, it's really heavy. It's going to take a lot, a lot of communication back and forth. That's why we have like two communication, two tasks. We can deactivate these gathering facts if we don't need it by simply specifying another option right after the host and indenting properly by saying, hey, the gather facts action, we don't want it. So just simply specify false. So if we access the terminal again, and we trigger once again the Ansible playbook to the playbook YAML. We're gonna just have the play web automatically is gonna go to our first task, ping, and we're gonna have the recap with the OK command. Wonderful. So let's continue by saying that, for example, we have another task. So we can go down a couple of lines and leave an empty line and specify another task with the dash symbol and say that this other task has an actual uh, shell command that does systemctl reload php dash fpm. So we're tapping our server and we say, hey, grab the php fpm service and reload it. If we do this and we try to run this playbook command, and let's remember that I don't currently have php fpm installed in my remote server, which I'm using for this test. If we try the first task, of course, it will work. The second one, that is the shell task, will fail. But the failure is really important because automatically Ansible will give us the full backtrace of what went wrong. So here we have failed to reload PHP FPM service because the FPM service is not found. So we know that it's not installed on our server. And this is great because automatically we don't need to go inside the server and check out the logs or check out the errors if something went wrong. Automatically Ansible will tell us. Also, Ansible does a super smart thing, automatically generates in the same directory that we currently are, a playbook.retry. The retry is really useful because other than being just a list of all the failed IP addresses where a specific task failed, it's great because we can tap the retry automatically without tapping the whole host file. Because if, for example, here, like we had in the previous lesson, we have 20 different URLs of 20 different IP addresses, and we're performing the same actions on 20 different servers at once, and only one server fails, we don't want to re-trigger all the action to all 20 servers. We want to just trigger the action to that specific server. That's why we can point to the retry and have just the list of the servers that they had an issue and they need a retry. So we can optimize our SSH connection and our triggers without re-triggering tasks that were successful on the first run, which is really, really useful. So here now we have a problem because if we just simply, as we did before, we uh, tap the playbook YAML, automatically Ansible will uh, trigger all the tasks that we list here. But the second task always will always fail because we don't have PHP installed. So we need a way to specify which task we want to run just as a test because we could want to we could potentially want to check which server is up and running, can be pinged, and then uh, after we can reload the PHP FVM. So let's change and edit a bit these tasks. So first of all, let's give both tasks a unique name. And we can specify the attribute name. And the name is, for example, check if is alive, or check if server is alive then we can have the command ping and then we can specify the tags command call call for example or uh, check we can call it check as you can see when i indented after ping automatically my code editor uh, indented it the tags inside ping this is a mistake in yaml because the tags is not an attribute of the ping if we do this we're telling to the yaml file that this tags attribute is actually an attribute of the ping command but it's not. So if we indented it properly on the same height of the ping, we're telling that the ping doesn't have any attribute, doesn't have any specific options, and the tags is another extra command that belongs to this task. And we can do exactly the same for the shell. So here we can give it a name and say uh, reload PHP, and then the shell is the same command, and then we can specify also here a tags, uh, call reload-php. So now that we did that, we can go back in our terminal and uh, 
First of all, if we trigger once again the playbook, we're gonna have, yes, the first it's successful and the second is an error again, but as you can see here now, we're not gonna have as a report the name of the command, but we're gonna have it as the name of the task that we specify, check if server is alive or reload PHP, which is great. It's more eloquent, we can write whatever we want and have a more obvious report in our stack in the terminal, but also here, because we specify a unique tag for these specific tasks, we can trigger by saying, hey, the Ansible playbook, instead of just triggering everything, check the unique tag that matches the check name of this unique tag. So if we hit enter, automatically Ansible will only trigger the task that matches the unique tag. And the fact that tags, it's plural, is amazing because we can have the same exact tag on multiple action. So if, for example, we duplicate this action and uh, we want to call this action uh, ping again, uh, just because, whatever, and we use the tags check, if we trigger once again the same command and we say, hey, use the tag check, automatically it's going to trigger the first task and it's going to trigger also the second task. So basically the tags is not a one-to-one -one relationship. We can have multiple tags specified in the same task or a multiple task and Ansible automatically is going to trigger all those tasks at once. As usual, you can find a link below this video where you can check the playbook YAML documentation of Ansible and you can find also a link to some playbook examples in a GitHub repository to have some uh, default tasks that you can take a look and how they're set up and all the options that you can use. I suggest you to take a look at the documentation because even if it's slightly complicated, it's really great and gives you an overview of all the optional, the great things that you can do with this playbook thing. In the next video, we're going to take a look on how to automatically install PHP, NGINX, and MySQL on my remote server with one single command, and it's going to be pretty awesome. Well, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And until the next lesson, as usual, happy coding.